What is up everybody? Welcome back to another cyberpunk video. So for today's video, I want to go over a list of things that I think they need to make better for cyberpunk 2077. So if you couldn't tell by now at this point, cyberpunk's launch has been a bit of a disaster. And there's essentially three groups of people that play cyberpunk. You have the first group that doesn't care and they're loving their experience and they don't mind the bugs and the glitches and they're having a good time. You have the second group that physically can't play the game and they're enraged at the lack of quality and they're demanding refunds, which is a lot of console players, hence why it's been taken down from the Sony store. But then you have the crowd that can actually play the game, so they're not upset at glitches, they're upset at the lack of features and things that were promised from the developers that just never made it into the game. So I myself have enjoyed the game. I've said it before, I think this game is amazing. It's got 9 out of 10 or even 10 out of 10 potential. The problem is it has all these performance issues and stuff weighing it down. But even though I've had a lot of fun, the game definitely isn't perfect. And I've probably put in maybe close to 100 hours into this game so far on the base console and I just made the upgrade to PC yesterday and I can already tell a massive difference in quality and performance but in this list I just want to go over some quality of life changes that I think the game needs going forward especially if this game's going to have multiplayer because I think the game's good, it just needs a little bit of tender loving care. After they get everything sorted out and they actually get the game to run, I'd like to see these changes be made to the game just to make the overall experience better for everyone. So the first major change I'd like to see made to this game is they need to completely overhaul the police system. The wanted system in this game is really bad. It's just not fun whatsoever. If you so much as just aim your gun accidentally at a pedestrian, it warns you that the police are going to come after you, and if you accidentally kill a pedestrian or do something illegal, then the police will automatically just spawn to your character no matter where you're at on the map. You could be in a building, you could be on top of a building, you could be under a bridge, doesn't matter where you are, the police automatically instantly spawn behind you, and there's nothing you can do about it. If you kill one police officer, then like three more more police officers that are even stronger will appear and there's no way you can take on the police. At least in a game like Grand Theft Auto or Red Dead Redemption, you will get a wanted level and then you have a little bit of time to prepare, like you know the police are on their way and they physically show up in vehicles. There's absolutely no police chases in Cyberpunk 2077. At least in Grand Theft Auto, I could get in my car and drive away and the police will actually chase me. In Cyberpunk, I just walk around the corner and hide for two seconds and the police just forget that I even committed a crime. I could have a five star wanted level and have like 10 police after me. I just walk around the corner and they just don't care anymore. So the police system definitely just isn't very fun. It needs a complete overhaul, especially if this game's gonna have multiplayer and everyone's running around in an open environment and everyone's just you know killing each other and stuff you have to have a different police system so that definitely needs changed and then the second thing that I think needs put in the game is transmogging your gear one thing that always bothered me about the game is that you obviously want to have the best stats you want to be able to take a lot of damage and stuff and to do that you just have to put on whatever gear had the best stats and it often made you look like an idiot this game needs a complete overhaul where like armor sets will give you bonuses that way you look the same if you're wearing a certain amount of gear and you should be able to transmog gear like if I find a cool hat I should be able to break down the stats of that hat and put it onto a different hat that I'd like better. Because it just sucks where you're wearing like a goofy helmet and a goofy set of glasses and a skirt and you have some like high heels on and you have this weird looking tank top and it really just breaks the immersion not being able to look the way that you want to. And then next up going forward, especially with the multiplayer, I think a good quality of life change would be the option to customize your vehicles. Grand Theft Auto does this right. You just drive into a workshop, you can change the way the vehicle looks, you can change its paint, you can change the interior of it, you can change everything. You can't change anything about the vehicles in Cyberpunk, which is really weird for an RPG. Like you're supposed to be able to customize the way that your stuff looks. Even in The Witcher, you could customize Roach a little bit because you could put trophies on him. It wasn't that big of a change, but it at least did something to your mount. There's nothing you can do about the way your vehicle looks in Cyberpunk. Whatever vehicle you get is the one you're stuck with, and I think that really sucks. That definitely would have made the vehicles mean a little bit more to the player, so I think they definitely need to change that going forward. And since we're on the topic of customizing things, 
I think they should also let you customize your weapons. Now already in this game there are different colored weapons, like I've seen the same exact pistol with like 3 or 4 different color variations. Depending on what gang is using the weapon, they'll like change the weapon color based off of their gang colors. So there are different colored weapons in the game, so why not let the player just change the color of the weapon however they like? We can change the scope on the weapon, why can't we change individual attachments to make the weapon better? Or since you can add different mods to the weapon, maybe a good way to do this would be if you add different mods it changes the appearance of the weapon. Let us change the color, let us change all these different things. We can craft our own weapons, but we can't change the way that they look. You can do this in a lot of other games, so I just don't know why they decided not to let you do that in this one. And then up next, I decided to include customizing your apartment. The apartments in this game feel absolutely useless. You can't even fast travel to the apartments. Like, if I want to physically go to V's apartment, I have to fast travel to the nearest area, find the elevator, ride the elevator all the way up, walk down the hallway, go up the stairs, find my bedroom, and then there's nothing I can do in there. The weapon rack at least changes if you find different iconic weapons. Some of the iconic weapons fit in the weapon slots in V's apartment. That's kind of about it. There's like nothing you can do. Even if it's something as basic as like changing the shower curtains or changing the lights or changing the floor or the carpet, I think it would have gone a long way. It would have given you a reason to at least go back to your apartment. The only thing you can really do in the apartment is store weapons and you don't even have to go to your apartment to do that. You can store your weapons in your vehicles. So to me, the apartment just seemed kind of useless. Out of my entire playthrough, I maybe went back to V's apartment three times total, and it just kind of felt like a waste. It was pretty underwhelming. So hopefully in a future DLC or something, they let you customize that. And then next up, I decided to include barbers slash plastic surgeons. So this has been a big complaint from pretty much everyone I've seen in the community. There's no way to change the way you look after you create your character, which is so bizarre for an RPG in 2020. That's a basic thing that's been in RPGs for years now. Because when you create your character, at some point you're going to want to change the way you look. That's just how it goes. People change the way they look in real life all the time. My look has changed drastically over the years. I used to have hair, now I'm bald. So maybe I want that to carry over to my character in Cyberpunk. Maybe when I created my character in Cyberpunk I had hair, well now maybe I want him to reflect me in real life. Point being that we need to have some way to change our appearance. Maybe I want my character to have a beard, maybe I want to change their fingernails. Maybe you want to change the genital size for whatever reason. I just can't believe in a game where they have like ripper docks and stuff that can change your body physically with cyber gear, but they can't change your physical appearance. I thought originally that there was going to be cyberware that could change your physical appearance. Like maybe I want a full metallic arm, or maybe I want different legs or prosthetic legs or you name it. I thought there was going to be like physical body changes that you could make to make you look different, but that just wasn't the case and that kind of sucks. So the next thing I'd like to see them change to the game is to add some sort of mini games. Now we don't need something as crazy as Gwent and The Witcher 3 because that could take hours and hours on itself, but I'd like to see something. There's no gambling, there's no mini games. I even went into a casino during one of the missions I had and I was so disappointed that I couldn't interact with any of the machines. They have gambling machines in the game, but you can't put money into them to, to like play slots. They need some sort of mini game that you can do. And even when it comes to the prostitutes, which I guess count as kind of like a mini game or something, out of all of Night City, there's only two prostitutes in the entire city. So they need some sort of mini game mechanic. I don't know what they could add. I mean, I guess a basic one would just be gambling, but that was pretty disappointing when I found out that there was no action mini games in this game. And then next up I want to talk about the brain dances. Now this could be considered a mini game I guess, but a lot of people are upset because the brain dance stuff was advertised like it'd be some sort of big feature and it ended up being kind of a dud. I think out of my entire playthrough I maybe used the brain dance maybe 10 times max and that's including some of the side missions. But there's a lot of brain dances that you can buy in this game, but you can't use them. They're listed in your inventory as junk and you can buy them for like 150 or more dollars and you even have the gear in your inventory, like that's part of the main story is that you get a brain dance headset. But it feels like they added the brain dances into the game, but then they cut them later on, like they didn't have enough time or for whatever reason they just cut the content. 
So those brain dances could have been a huge deal. They could have had sex brain dances. They could have had mystery or drama or you name the genre. They could have had like endless amounts of brain dances for people to play. So I think that's definitely a huge missed opportunity. And then the next thing I want to talk about is the balancing in this game. Since I got pretty late game, one thing I've noticed is that as you level up your character, you just become extremely overpowered. Like if you put points into your pistols or to your auto rifles or your shotguns, it just gets to the point where you keep getting more and more powerful, but the enemies don't scale with how powerful you are. So late game, I ended up putting a lot of points into my pistols. I got a legendary pistol. I put multiple mods on it so that it would have a higher chance of doing crit damage. But now I'm just basically a god. I walk around and I one shot kill pretty much everybody that I encounter. And late game, after you do a lot of the side quest, all there's left to do is the little police scanner things. And you show up to the organized crime there's maybe three to five enemies there tops. I one shot all of them and then I have to drive to the next place and it's just wash, rinse, repeat over and over and over. So it's rewarding in a bad regard. Like you become more powerful, but you become too powerful. And I'm playing on the hardest difficulty because the game was too easy. I was playing on hard and I wasn't having fun in the combat anymore. So I bumped it up to the hardest difficulty and it's still not very fun. I think there's a lot of potential here. I really enjoy the combat and I really enjoy the way that some of the weapons feel, but I shouldn't be punished for leveling up my character. I'm to the point where I just want to use weapons that I don't have points put into my skill trees. Like I don't have any points put into my melee weapons. So for me to even have a challenge at this point, I have to run around with a sword even though I don't have a sword build. Or I have to use shotguns because I don't have any points put into shotguns. But the reason I don't have any points put into shotguns was because I didn't want to use shotguns. I wanted to use pistols, but now I'm too overpowered with pistols. So I really hope going forward they do some balancing changes because I don't want to be punished for playing the game too much. That just isn't fun. And then the final thing I'm gonna put on this list isn't really that big of a deal, but I'd like to see some changes to the mini map. When you're driving in this game, the mini map is atrocious. It's really, really bad. Like as you're driving and you're going like 100 miles an hour, suddenly your GPS is just like turn right and you have to completely slam the brakes and you have to turn around and drive in the opposite direction because you missed your turn. The mini map is way too zoomed in. It needs zoomed out so you can actually see where you're going in the city. I don't know, that's just a pet peeve I've had when I've played the game, but I think that'd be a good quality of life change that not too many people would be upset with. So that does it for my top 10 things that I'd like to see changed in Cyberpunk 2077 going forward. Let me know what you guys think needs changed down in the comment section down below. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, and that is going to do it for me everyone, and I will talk to you all in the next video.